Hello and welcome to Live Tutorial Tuesday, where we will be working a problem in both Excel and QuickBooks. We'll be looking at it in terms of both theory, in terms of recording journal entries with debits and credits, and then we'll go into it in more detail with terms of software, which is something that's often used in practice. And that's always a question that people have, whether they be students or if they be from the work environment. Both sides ask the same question oftentimes when learning accounting principles from different angles, from different aspects of the spectrum. Students often looking at the journal entries that we are putting into place and asking, how does this relate to the software when I start working? I know this is going to be in the software somehow. How much of it is in software? How does it work in the software? What do I need to know in terms of debits and credits when working with software? Often work with people that are in the accounting field as a, as a CPA working with people that work with bookkeeping and small businesses on the other end of the spectrum and their, their perspective is, look, I'm in business to do this and to make money. How and this, I know that accounting is important and I'm using the software. How much of the software can the software do for us and how much knowledge in terms of accounting do we need to know in order to work the software to get it to do what we need to do? Both aspects asking the same questions in terms of how do I get the software and the accounting uh, to do what we need to do in practice. In terms of learning accounting, oftentimes what we end up doing is saying, first we wanna know, know the basics, we wanna learn debits and credits. That's traditionally how we start. And then we go into uh, the, the aspects of how is that gonna go into a database program? What do we need within the database program? So that takes a bit of waiting <laughs> and to see you know how these two things relate sometimes when we first start out we're going to start here by doing these same things side by side and hopefully relieve some of that stress of waiting to see what how these things apply to software when we go forward that's going to be uh, the objective here this is going to be part two so we had part one last time if you weren't here last time that's okay we're going to start fresh from this point forward and uh, we'll have a new worksheet. You won't need to have seen the, the prior uh, lecture in order to do this. However, they do link together. And if you want to go to the prior lecture, it was recorded. You can take a look at that now or at a later time. But to move forward from here, uh, we don't really need that. We could, we could move forward. So before we jump for any, any further, I'm going to take a quick break here and uh, show uh, our first comic and uh, just check everything out. And I'll be right back. All right, so our objectives, the objectives will be, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna switch the display screens here. And what we are trying to do is record and post uh, the startup journal entries. Now, we recorded the, the complete startup journal entries last time. We're going through basically the first month. These are gonna be the standard transactions that we're gonna have from month to month, paying the utility bill, paying payroll, and these types of activities. We're gonna be recording those types of activities. Then we're going to enter uh, startup data into QuickBooks. So we're going to put this same stuff kind of by hand. That's what Excel is. It's going to be the equivalent of doing it by hand, the theory of the debits and credits. Then we'll put this same information into QuickBooks. I'm going to put it into QuickBooks as easily as possible. So I'm going to use the check register as much as possible. And the idea here, I know not everybody has QuickBooks, but the idea is to just give an idea of what QuickBooks would look like. How are we going to put the same information in to QuickBooks? Now, the, as we work through this problem, you're gonna see that there is a link below this during the presentation only. One is gonna to go to the Excel document. So if you wanted to go to the Excel document, you can, you can work through this as we go, or you can watch this and work through it later. You can rewind as we go. I highly recommend doing the transactions, of course, because that's the best way uh, to really get this stuff. Also have a backup of the QuickBooks file. Now, again, I know not everybody has QuickBooks software. You would need QuickBooks 2016 or later in order to restore the backup file. But um, 
If you don't have it, that's okay. If you do have it, you can put it in place. Again, the QuickBooks is, an, is there just to see what will happen from the theory to a software such as QuickBooks. Now we're gonna be using Excel and as we do accounting, we might as well learn Excel because Excel it becomes very important to different industries. Wherever you are now, Excel or some kind of spreadsheet is becoming more and more important. Often Excel because everybody works with database programs. Everything's in data, whether you're, you're in sales, whether you're in marketing and accounting, you're going to have some type of data in a database program. And if you know how to export that data to Excel and then sort it, that's going to be really useful. So the, the fundamentals of Excel, Excel is huge, obviously. The fundamentals of Excel, you can really learn from working problems like accounting. So it's really beneficial both for understanding accounting and for understanding Excel, two things that are going to be very important whether you work in uh, the accounting department or not. So those are going to be the objectives as we go through these in terms of debits and credits, in terms of the theory. I'm going to go through a set of questions to try to you know, not fall into any pitfalls that people tend to fall into when learning this stuff. This is going to be our cheat sheet that we have here. So the cheat sheet is going to be a T account. And we, at some point, just, we can keep referring to this, but we just need to memorize this. And I'm going to keep uh, asking questions related to this. And we need to know that the normal balance for assets, asset types accounts are going to be debits the normal balance for, for credit for <laughs> liability type accounts uh, tend to be credits, are credits. And the normal balance for equity, which gets a little tricky because equity's got some parts to it, but the capital account or the net of all equity accounts, hopefully is gonna be a credit, meaning that assets minus liabilities uh, has a credit. Um, and then the revenue, the income statement is gonna be a credit normal balance and the expenses are gonna be a debit normal balance. We kinda of need to have a cheat sheet or know that so that uh, when we go into uh, the, the next step, how do we make these go up or down? We can apply a simple rule in order to do that. Now, if you don't have this down, the second best cheat sheet, which we will be using, is a trial balance. So you wanna have the trial balance open, which we will have and we'll keep on referring to. I recommend having a trial balance open all the time. Once we know that, we're gonna say the same thing will make it go up and the opposite thing will make it go down. This will make more sense as we keep repeating this a lot of times, but if it's a debit balance account, then the same thing will make it go up, a debit. If it's a debit balance account, then the opposite thing will make it go down, a credit. If it's a credit balance account, then the same thing will make it go up, a credit. If it's a credit balance account, then the opposite thing will make it go down, a debit. Again, I know that can get confusing if you keep on saying that, but, but uh, we'll keep on repeating it with uh, examples and that's the best way to do it. So this is gonna be the worksheet that we will be using. It's gonna be a very intimidating worksheet, but we're only gonna be working one cell at a time. We're gonna be working very simple formulas. If you download the worksheet, I locked some of the cells, so you can't kind of go into a cell like this because if you do go into a cell like that, what'll happen is you can delete some of the formulas and I don't want you to delete some of the formulas. So uh, be aware of that, I locked them for so that you don't mess the thing up. Mainly, we were going to be entering in the blue areas here, and we're just going to enter in the blue areas, and we're going to use very simple formatting to format back and forth between the worksheet. Uh, this worksheet, again, is available in the link below if you want to go down there and work with the problem or work it at a later time or just to take a look at the worksheet. You can do that. Uh, also note that I put one in Google Sheets, so uh, if you wanted to download the Google Sheets, that's in a link below. Uh, if, if you want to work the problem as we go, you can kind of do it in Google Sheets. Google Sheets doesn't have the, the amount of capabilities that Excel has, but uh, it's, it's more versatile in some ways, and it's free <laughs> if you have a Google account. So uh, it's really worth using whether you have Excel or not. Again, we're learning the fundamentals of Excel, which mainly Google Sheets can handle. Obviously, the, the components of Excel go very, very deep. Nobody really understands everything about Excel because it does so many things. We got to know what our niche is. But no matter what we do, the fundamentals are the fundamentals. Can we move around cells? Do we know basic you know, formulas? And can we add and subtract cells? The, those things you can, we can clearly use Google Sheets with. So if anybody wants to log in there, you can copy this file, save it to your own document and work it later time or uh, you can work it live here if people want to work it as a group. Uh, that's an option as well. Okay, so uh, that is what we have there. And then the QuickBooks file will look like this. So I've, op I've uploaded a QuickBooks file. I don't expect everybody to download the QuickBooks file, but if you want to download it now or at a later time, 
uh, it's there for you to do so. And so you can work through that and see what we have. We're starting from this point forward. So the data uh, as of the end of last time, hopefully is in there correctly at this point in time. I've got three sheets open. I've got the standard balance sheet profit and loss, which is an income statement, and the trial balance open. And here's our trial balance on uh, QuickBooks. And you can see that uh, it, it doesn't have the zero balances. QuickBooks doesn't put the zero balances in there. But it's got all the other balances, and that should be the same as what we have over here in our trial balance on uh, the Excel sheet. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. We're going to put this data then into this sheet, and we're going to do it both in Excel and in QuickBooks. Going to take one more quick break uh, before we move to that. So here's our next uh, comic here. Is that the next comic? That's the same comic. I don't have another comic. Oh, there it goes. Anyways, hold on just a second. Okay, so let's work through this thing. So first item we have here, we're gonna say that on 523, cash received from client for revenue earned in the past recorded in accounts receivable. So first I got the date and I know that I have, first question I'm gonna ask every time is cash affected? And in this case, we're gonna say it is because cash is received. So before I go into anything else, I could answer that and move from there. So I'm gonna say 523, uh, cash was received. Now cash is an asset. So assets we can see on our trial balance have debit balances by the fact that it doesn't have brackets in this instance. And therefore we need, and we need to make it go up. Therefore we're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case is gonna be another debit. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Now I could type it in here. I could say cash and uh, that would be very easy to do, but I'm gonna get in the practice of copying and pasting. So I'm gonna copy this cell. I'm gonna do a right click and copy. I'm using a Win Windows program obviously and I pasted something funny. I'm gonna right click and copy and then I'm gonna put it in H5. So here's H5 and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste it not normal. I don't wanna make it green, but values only. I'm gonna paste it one, two, three. So there is that and we're gonna put the amount then which will be 1,000 in the debit. I'm not gonna do any formatting. I'm just gonna type one, zero, zero, zero. And when we select enter, it'll put the comma in there because of Excel will be formatting for us. I'm gonna add this. And then we're gonna have a credit of, I'm gonna put the credits as a negative. Again, this can be confusing to some people, but no matter what you do, we've gotta know that we're gonna add and subtract debits and credits. So we're gonna to have to kind of differentiate those in our mind in some way or another. I'm gonna use credits as negatives in this worksheet because it's practical, it's useful, and hopefully I'll show you why that is and, and show you the practicality of it as we go. Negative one, zero, zero, zero. When we select enter, it's gonna put brackets around it and a comma so that it's formatting the cell for us. Now we just need to know what this cell should be. So in order to do that, let's read the rest of the question. We're gonna say, uh, uh, from clients for revenue earned in the past recorded in accounts receivable. So this was revenue earned in the past that's uh, recorded in accounts receivable. Therefore, why are people paying us? Of course, we did, we did work, earned revenue. So we might think it should go into revenue. However, we earned it in the past. <laughs> and so again, in, in real life, we would know this. We would say they gave us a check for something that happened in the past. In a book problem, we gotta kind of figure this out. How, are, how is the book gonna tell us this? 
and they might tell us just that it's on account. So if that if it says it's on account, it means accounts receivable. So this 2,500 is receivable that's owed to us. We know we're going to credit it because we debited cash. Does that make sense? Well, accounts receivable is an asset, and we need to make it go down because people no longer owe us as much money. Therefore, we do the opposite thing to it. And so it does make sense that we would credit it to go down. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor on L6, right click and copy. I'm going to put my cursor on L, I mean H6, right click and paste it one, two, three. Again, we could just type it in there, but I'm going to paste it one, two, three. Now, if you want to put some nice formatting in there, you don't have to do this, but you can go to the home tab, alignment and increase the indenting, increase indenting. So instead of going in there and double clicking like three times, you can use that button to do it. Just remember that there's a difference between being in the cell and being on the cell. You have to be on the cell or else if you're in the cell, you won't see any of the, of the options here. Now, this is the general journal. I'm going to post that to uh, the, the, the general ledger over here. So the general ledger is going to be in the same order as the trial balance, assets, liabilities, uh, equity, uh, income, and expense. We're going to post cash. So that's going to be our first account on the trial balance, first account on the GL. This activity is what we did last time. That's the activity that happened last time. I haven't put the dates in all the GL accounts because I'm trying to save some space for us all. So it's just going to be in like chronological order. So I'm going to put my cursor in 015, which is the next cell to do this in. I want to do this with, with formula. So I could type in 1000. Don't want to do that because I want to tie everything together. There, because if there's an, a problem and everything's tied together, then we can go back and figure it out. So I'm going to say this equals and then just point to this cell. So it equals I5. Equals I5. What's going to happen when we hit enter? That 20,800, which is a debit, uh, is going to go up because we're doing the same thing to it, to 21,800. We also see that 21,800 here. And notice the formulas now can tell us that we're out of balance because the debits minus the credits are out of balance. That's the, you know, the benefit of using credits as negative numbers, which I hope, uh, you know, we can see some usefulness that you got to kind of know what debits and credits are being re represented as. Now we're going to take the accounts receivable, do the same thing to put us back in balance. It's our second account. It's going to be our second account on the GL. So here's cash. Here's accounts receivable. We're going to be down here in T10. T10. Sounds like a Terminator or something. So we're going to T10 and we're going to put this equals. I'm going to use the equal sign again point to that 1,000. What's it going to do? The 2,500 is going to be doing the opposite thing to it, making it go down 1,005 here, 1,500 here on the trial balance, and we're back at zeros here. Now we're going to report the same thing and show how this will be happening in the uh, QuickBooks. Now, of course, QuickBooks, there's a couple ways we can do it. I'm going to try to do as much with the check register as possible. So because we selected cash, I'm going to use the check register. Uh, we might do it. I mean, obviously, we, we would do it a different way, probably if um, we we're trying to track receivables in a different way. But I want to use the check register just to make it as easy as possible. So we're going to go to banking. I'm going to use a register and check register. Now, the register is an attempt not to kind of know debits and credits. We can just say cash is going up and down and whatever cash is going up and down that whatever the other accounts are doing, that's what the other accounts are doing. That's what QuickBooks tries to do. So we're going to say as of 523, we're going to say that we had a, a deposit because cash went in and it was from, let's see who it was from, L. Williams. So I'm going to put in L. Williams. We already have L. Williams because uh, it was a, L. Williams was a customer before. So we're going to say tab and it's a deposit. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the deposit side. That's not a credit in this case. It's a deposit. So that's why QuickBooks is a bit different. And we're going to say it's 1000. In this case, I could put it in as a journal entry, by the way. And then we're going to put it into accounts receivable. So that's the other account. So we're saying cash uh, went up and the other account is accounts receivable. Just note that we also have to assign a customer, which is also L. Williams, so that it can track the receivables. So then if we select OK, it posts that. Let's see if we what happens to the trial balance. We've got uh, the 21.8 in the trial balance, and that's what we have here. And the accounts receivable went to 1,005, and that's what we have, 1,005 here. And so it, it posts that out for us. 
Now, again, I realize that most people don't look at the trial balance when they're using QuickBooks. They're going to look at the balance sheet, which is also in balance because we can see that the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity. And we can look at uh, the profit and loss and see that we just have that 6,100 income. This was not income at this point because we didn't earn the revenue. We just received the revenue. We earned it in the past. Okay, so let's go to the next one. We'll, we'll start going a bit faster, of course, as we go through these. Next item, we're gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna highlight this and say that one's done. So I'm gonna say that's done with a highlight. And we're gonna say on 525, receive cash for work that has not uh, year been done. So work will be completed uh, three months. Okay, so we're, we're saying as 523, we're, we can say before we go on anything else, we received cash. So again, is cash affected? Yes, we received it. So before I go on anything else, even though it's not, it's not very well worded there, but we're going to say cash was received. I know that. I know what they're trying to tell me that. So 525, cash is our first favorite account. It's going to go up. It has a debit balance. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to say cash. I'm going to copy the cash, put the cash on top, pasting it. Uh, what I didn't copy. Oh, I did something funny. Undo, our favorite undo button, copy cash, and paste it one, two, three, four, 4,500. Then I know I'm going to credit something, 4,500. I'm going to represent credits with a negative for Excel purposes. Again, negative doesn't mean credit. It's we're, we're going to add and subtract credits. All right, and then what's that account going to be? Well, let's read this and see if we can figure out what. Receive cash for work that has not yet been done is what we're trying. Work will be done for the next uh, few months. So we got paid, and usually we would credit revenue when that happens. But the, when did we, we recognize revenue under the revenue recognition principle? When we earn it, we haven't done the work. Therefore, we can't represent the fact that we've earned it yet. So we have to credit something else rather than revenue. That's going to be what we call unearned revenue, revenue that we're going to earn in the future. Now, it's a liability account, you can tell because it's orange, and it's in the liability section, and uh, we already know that we're going to credit it because we debited cash. That's the beauty of doing cash first. Why are we going to credit unearned revenue? Does it make sense, or unearned fees in this case, same thing? And uh, if we think it through, liabilities, as accounts payable here, have credit balances. The bad thing is going up because we owe something in the future. We owe work or the money back if we don't do the work. And therefore, we need to do the same thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So it does make sense that we're going to credit that. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it on the bottom in H9, right click, and paste it one, two, three. Then I'm going to make it look nice, go into the Home tab, Alignment, Increase, and Denting, and there we have it. Okay, so now this is the general uh, journal. We're going to post this to the general ledger. The unearned fees is how many accounts down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not sure I counted that correctly, but it's the last liability account, which will be the same from the trial balance to the general ledger. So we got the assets and the liabilities, but let's post the cash first. We're getting ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we're going to say cash, first account. Here's cash in P, and we're down here in 16. P, 16. And I'm going to do this with a formula. I'm not going to type it in there. Actually, I should be on O, 16. <laughs> It's a debit, and I'm gonna, not going to type it in there. I'm going to say this equals and point to this 4,500. When we hit enter, the 21.8 is going to go up by 4,500 because we're doing the same thing to it, to 26.3. That same 26.3 on the general ledger for cash is also on the trial balance for cash. We are now out of balance by the 4,500 because we have not yet posted the credit. Let's post the credit. So again, that's going to be the last uh, liability account. So I'm going to go over. It's going to be the same for the GL. This is the general ledger. We're scrolling over. Here's all the assets. There's our liability accounts. We want the last one, which is going to be down here. And I know I'm scrolling through screens. And if, if some people, if you have good eyes, some people like to make the screen small to do this. So you can see it all in one place. When you do that, however, you're going to have to widen some of the cells in order to see it. Uh, I would rather scroll through. I know that's painful uh, to some people. And it's something you got to get used to or get used to something. You can also freeze the screens and use some other techniques. But in any case, <laughs> we want to be down here in unearned revenue at AB24. I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to use the scroll bar to scroll over to the cell I want to point to and connect it to this one. So equals this cell here, and that is cell 
uh, J9. So again, you could just type in like equals J9 and it'll point to it. But if you point and click, it really kind of visually gets you tied out there. So that is that. And then we're gonna scroll back over here and we're back in balance and we can see that we owe now that 4,500. So let's post the same thing now to QuickBooks and see how that might look. And again, I'm gonna to try to do everything in the check register or as much as I can in the check register. So we're gonna say that cash, this is the check register for cash at 525 and that will be a deposit and from, let's see if I put a name here, L. Brown. I'm not sure I need the period. I'll just type it in there. Do we have L. Brown? Tab, we don't have them yet. So we're going to say customer new quick add. And it's on the deposit side. So make sure you get the deposit right and the quick on the right side. I messed that up in the last one on one, just one transaction. Okay, and the amount is, is a bit high. There we go. All right, and then we have to put it to unearned. And again, I don't have that account. So if I select the drop down, I don't see unearned. So it's really easy to add accounts. And as we go, we're just going to say unearned fees is what we called it, which is a type of revenue. And we're going to say tab unearned fee fees would be our revenue account. This is a liability account, but fees earned is one type of revenue name that you could call revenue when you're a service company. Okay, it's gonna say that it wants it to be an expense and we don't want it to be an expense. So this is something we kinda gotta know in terms of just theory it, to set up QuickBooks. It's a liability, so we're gonna go and it's, we're gonna say it's an other current liability. Now we're gonna say save and close and enter. And if we go to the trial balance then, we're going to say, what happened? Did ca cash 26.3? Is that what we have over here? I hope so. I hope it is. We're going to say 26.3. That looks good. And then we're going to say that unearned revenue is 5,004. So I'm going to scroll back over here. 5,004 unearned revenue. That's correct. So we got that in both sides. And uh, obviously, people would normally be looking at the profit and loss. Notice, I, even though we got cash, no revenue is impacted. We can see that on our trial balance really easily too because if you use these formulas then you go down here and i just say well credits minus the debits is revenue right there uh, 6100 and that matches what's on the income statement and then the balance sheet of course is in balance and uh, we can see that we're in balance the 61.4 of assets equals the liabilities and equity also 61.4 now uh, we can see that on our trial balance by just summing up the assets, the liabilities, and the equity. Now, if you look at those formulas, you'll see that I've switched the signs a bit just to make it, again, not debit and credits, but plus and minus. And so, so this formatting really tells us everything we need to know from a clunky, more, I, the financial statements are actually a bit more clunky. We can find everything we need to know just from this pretty quickly. If I wanna know how many assets we have, I can just highlight them say, there's my assets, adds up to 61.4. How much are my liabilities? Well, they're right there. They add up to 5,300. What's my bottom line net income? Well, it's the credits minus the debits on the income statement, which we don't have any debits yet because we have no expenses yet, but 6,100. So we can get everything from the, from the trial balance. Not everybody can. You'd have to know debits and credits to, to get it from there. Okay, so then we're gonna do the, the next one here. Let's see what else we have. I'm gonna highlight this one green. Say that one's done, that's green. Next one, 527, we're gonna say paid uh, employees for salary incurred. So again, it says paid, and anytime something says paid, I'm assuming we paid with uh, cash. So we're gonna say cash is affected. Our favorite account cash is affected. It's going the wrong way, but you know, that's the way things go. So we're gonna say 26,300 cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a credit. So again, I'm gonna do this by copying, copying. I gotta stop saying again, I'm sorry. Copy that and we're gonna put it underneath because credits traditionally go on the bottom. Right click and paste it one, two, three. Now we're gonna post this out. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put the number here. The credits for a negative 960. I'm gonna put it in there as a credit. And then I know I'm gonna debit something for that same amount, 960. And now we just need to know what that amount should be here. What's gonna be the amount? 
So if we go back to our question, we're going to say that we paid employees for salary incurred. Therefore, the other thing has to do something with salaries or wages or something. If we look at our trial balance, which I always recommend you having in front of you when you work these, you can see, you can go through here and say, hmm, how about, I don't know, salaries expense. Again, it could be called wages expense or something else, but uh, we're going to put this salaries expense. It should be in the trial balance somewhere or the chart of accounts. Now, we already know we're going to debit it because we credited cash. That's the beauty of doing cash first. Does that make sense? We'll see that all expense accounts have debit balances, and they really only go up. They only go one way. The employee, we pay the employee. The employee never pays us. So there are exceptions, and we'll talk about those later. But for the most part, expenses only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, yeah, it makes sense that we're going to debit the salaries expense. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Paste it one, two, three on top in the debit section. Gonna put my cursor here in H12 in order to format this cell by going to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and Increase Indenting. And there we have that. Now let's post this out. This is the general journal. We're gonna post it out to the general ledger. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a quick break here and be right back. Here's our comic for that. All right, so let's post this one out. So we're going to say that uh, we've got the salaries expense. If we go through here, we can see that that's going to be our first expense, our second dark blue account. So if we go back over here, I'm going to say if we, it's going to be the same from the trial balance to the general ledger. So we're going to go to the general ledger. I'm going to scroll over here. And we could do it with a bar down here. And we're looking for the dark blue one. So here we go, way over here in uh, AI, uh, AI 9 not artificial intelligence but the cell ai9 okay so we could just type the number in there but again i'm going to use the cell references i'm going to use the cell references equals and i'm going to scroll over here point to what we want that 960 and enter there is that it goes up to that 960 and we can see the 960 there we can see we're out of bounds by 960 why because we haven't posted the other side the cash side so here's cash we're going to post that. It's the top account on the trial balance, top account on the general ledger. Down here on O uh, O17 is the next cell. That equals pointing to, whoop, I'm sorry, we need it in the credit side. P17 uh, equals pointing to the credit. We got the 21.3 debit minus the 960 credit brings us down to 25.340. 25.340 represented here and we are back in balance there. All right, let's post that same thing over to QuickBooks. So QuickBooks, we're gonna go to is cash impacted, right? And so I'm gonna post this into the checking account. As of 527, this is gonna be, I'm just gonna keep the same check number and we're gonna say that it's gonna be paid to. Now, we, this could be multiple employees. I didn't give an employee name here. Uh, oh, I did give an employee name. So here's the employee name. Got one employee. Now, obviously, when we process payroll, uh, a payroll can be a very complex journal entry because there's withholdings and other things involved. We're doing a very simple payroll. We shook hands with our one employee. We told them we're going to pay him or her uh, this amount, and we're just going to pay it. We're not going to deal with withholdings or whatnot. We'll deal with that at a later time. Okay, so we're going to put that in, and we're going to say quick add, and this is an employee and it's going to be for uh, 960. Now, if we hit the drop down, we say, do we have any salaries expense or not yet? So I'm gonna go over here and say, what did we call it? What do we wanna call it? Salaries, wages, we have some options. We called it salaries expense here. So I'm gonna copy that, make it the same. So it looks the same. Tab, set it up. 
QuickBooks guesses that it's an expense. QuickBooks is right this time, so we're gonna say that's good, and save and close, and enter. Let's see if it does what we hope it should do. Let's go to the trial balance. Trial balance, we see that we have 25,340 cash, 25,340 cash, and we have the, uh, I, <laughs> no, I put sell cash down here. Gonna fix that. And we've got salaries expense of that 960. Okay, and the salaries expense here should be 960. All right, and what and that's gonna have an impact on the profit and loss. Profit and loss, now we have an expense bringing the 61 down by the 960 to the 5140, which we can see over here represented uh, by this amount here, credits minus the debits. All right, let's go to the next transaction. I'm gonna go back over here and we're gonna say next transaction. I'm gonna highlight this one. This one has been completed, so I'll make it green. Now we are on this one, 528. Receive cash from clients for work done in past and recorded as accounts receivable. So again, before I look at anything else, I could say, did, did we is cash infected? Yeah, we received cash. So on 528, we're gonna say we got cash. Cash has a debit balance, and uh, it and, and we need to make it go up because we're going to do the same thing to it. Therefore, we're going to debit the debit balance account. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put it in H14. Right click, paste it. One, two, three. The amount will be 1,400. If we debit something, we're going to need to credit something. If there's only two accounts, which there are, so we're going to credit. I'm going to represent negative 1,400. There is that. Now we just need to know what account that should be for. Why do we get cash? Well, normally it's because we do work and hopefully we got cash from the client, but we need to know when we did the work. Timing is important here. So receive cash from client for work done in the past. That means we did work in the past under the revenue recognition principle, recognizing the revenue in the past when work was done. And therefore this time we can't put the credit to revenue. We need to reduce the asset, meaning the IOU from the customer of accounts receivable at 1,500 needs to go down. We already know we're going to credit it because we debited cash, the beauty of doing cash first. Does that make sense? Assets uh, have a debit balance. In order to make something go down, we do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. Therefore, it makes sense for us to credit this to make the receivable go down. So I'm going to copy this receivable, right click in cell H15 and paste it. One, two, three. All right, and then I'm gonna indent this to make it look nice. Home tab, uh, alignment and indent. So we have that. Okay, and then we can post this out. This is the general journal. We're gonna post it to the general ledger. So the trial balance cash is the first account. Same with the general ledger. We're gonna go to the next cell, which is now in 018. 018, I'll make it so you can see it a bit. Equals, and I'm gonna to point to this 1,400. When we hit enter, the 25,340 will go up in the debit direction to 26,740. Now we're going to post the other side, accounts receivable, second account here, second account here. We're going to be in T11 equals, and we're going to point to that 1,400. This is a debit of 1,500 minus that credit, the credit being the opposite thing, making it go down to 100 is left over yet. So we're gonna go back to this client and say, you know, we, you still owe us $100. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing. Now we're back in balance over here and we're gonna do the same thing over in QuickBooks. And we're gonna say that I'm gonna do everything I can with the check registered to make it as simple as possible. So now we are on 528. We have a deposit. The deposit is from uh, L. Williams. And notice when we do the, the journal entries, we don't really need to know it's from L. Williams, but for practical purposes, we want to track that and QuickBooks will force us to know that uh, so that it will track it. It won't let us post it if we don't. And now we're going to go in the credit and it's going to be 1,400. And where is it going to go? Accounts receivable. Whenever we post to accounts receivable, we have to make sure we have a customer or QuickBooks will not let us post it so that it can track how much uh, is owed from that customer. So there is that. 
Now we'll go back and see what the reports look like. So if we go to the trial balance, uh, we have 26,740. And that 26,740 should also be here, 26,740. And we've got the receivable is now 100 is all that's left. 100 is left there. All right, no effect on net income from that transaction because we didn't earn it at that point in time. We earned it at some point in the past. Next transaction. Oh, let's go ahead and make that green because it's been done. It's going to be 529 paid cash. So I'm not, I'm not even going to read the rest of it and just say, oh, paid cash. Well, before I know anything else, I know is cash affected. Yeah, it went down. So 529 here, 529. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put the credit on the bottom because cash typically goes on the bottom just out of tradition. Right click and paste it to one, two, three. The amount will now be a credit negative 480 and enter formats for us because Excel does the formatting. If we credit something, we also need to debit something. Debit going on top. Same amount, 480. What uh, should the what should the um, account be now? And uh, let's look at our question. We're going to say we see for the electric company. So we paid the electric bill. Now we could put a, a few different things there. We could say electric bill, and if we want to track the expense separately, we could say that, or we could just put it into a more generic account. What we want to do is see what happened in the past. And if we look at our trial balance or our chart of accounts, we see utilities. That seems reasonable. So we're, if we don't see anything else that says electric bill, if we can't see what happened last time, it's reasonable to us for us to assume and to be consistent by continuing to post it to utilities. We already know it's going to be a debit because we credited cash. Uh, but does that make sense? Well, all expenses have debit balances and they really only go up. Utility bill never pays us. We pay the utility bill. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm going to copy that, put that on top in cell H. 17 by right clicking and pasting one two three oh what did i do with the formatting okay and then here i'm going to go to the home tab alignment and indent so here is our general journal we're going to post that to the general ledger uh the utilities first utilities is way down here in the trial balance that's the last account it's going to be the last account on the gl as well so I can just scroll all the way over to the last account on the GL, way over here, right? And it's this one way down here. It's going to be a debit. So I'm in AM 21, way over here. And I could just type it in there. I could in, put in 480, uh, but I want to do it with a cell reference. So we're going to say this equals, and I'm going to take a scroll bar and scroll all the way back over here so I can point and click and just get it in my head that that is going there right and that makes this account to go up and because that account went up this just let me show you what cell references can do formula and you can't do this because i locked your sheet that's one of the problems with locking it but <laughs> sorry about that but this cell goes uh here and here right so that so we can see it's all linked together and the more links we have usually the better so you want to link it all together if there's a problem then we can figure out what happened through the links. For example, why are we off by 480? Why did that change? Okay, it's because this one's not going anywhere. That one doesn't have a link. This one does have a link, so we know that's not the problem, most likely. The problem is here. So to fix that problem, we're going to post cash. So cash is right here. We're going to go to the next uh, open area. In P19 equals, point to that and say, that's a debit. This is a credit, therefore the debit balance is going to go down by 480 to 26, uh, 260, that amount being on the trial balance as well. Okay, let's post that same thing into QuickBooks. So QuickBooks is going to do as much as we can from the check register. I'm going to say 529. Uh, I'm just going to keep the check number. And I think we named the electric company something very creative electric company there is. i gotta work on my my team needs to work on the creativity here okay so we're gonna say add quick add and vendor and that is going to be for 480 
and tab. And again, do we have a utilities expense? No, because it's our first month. Uh, after we put it in there one time, it'll be in there all the time, but we're gonna put in utilities. If we can spell it right. We're gonna put it in there even if we don't spell it right. And it's gonna ask for an expense. That's gonna be the type of account. Is that correct? QuickBooks is correct with that uh, guesstimation. And enter, save it, check it, trial balance, refresh, and 26,260 here. 26,260 is what we have. And then we have uh, the utilities, uh, 480 there and 480 here. Now, now again, just to, just to verify where we're going and where we're at if anybody's jumped in here, note uh, that we're, we're just doing the same thing by theory in terms of posting debits and credits and trying to show the QuickBooks at the same point in time. If you wanna work this at the same time, you can download the Excel sheet, uh, which is below in the description during the presentation. And uh, you can also work it live using Google Sheets, which is another link down below. I don't expect everybody to be working in Excel, but in QuickBooks, but I have included a backup in QuickBooks. If you would like to do that, you would need the software in order to do that. Um, but I just the idea is to show how the software and the, the theory are related as we go to answer questions, both in terms of students who often learn theory without software first, and then also uh, small business professionals or business professionals who often use software before theory, and they typically have the same question, how do these things tie together? So we're gonna try to tie it together as we go. Note that our net income now is, is uh, here. We've got revenue, credit, minus expenses for net income of income, 4,660. If we go here, we go profit and loss, the income statement for QuickBooks, is uh, revenue minus the expenses, 4,660. So we are on track, it looks like. We've got three more transactions and then we have to stop because that's all we got. And so uh, we have to enjoy these last ones. So let's see what we have here, um, 530. I'm gonna make this one green, cause that one's done. So I'm gonna make that green. I'm gonna put this one on top and we're gonna say pay cash to telephone expense. So again, before I even read anything, paid cash. What do we pay with cash? So it's cash affected. Yeah, cash, debit balance. We need to make it go down. Gonna do the opposite thing to it in order to do that, which is a credit. Gonna copy cash. See how we're, if we just keep on repeating, I'm gonna put it below. I haven't put the date yet, but the date's gonna go there. I can imagine that. And I'm gonna put it below, <laughs> right click and paste it, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna put the date, which is 530. Then I'm gonna put the amount, which is in the credit side of 300. Then I'm gonna assume that we're gonna have a debit of 300. Journal entries always needed equal debits and credits. And if there's only two accounts affected, then we need a debit of 300. Then I'm just gonna need that account. What will that account be? Well, let's go back to the problem. Why did we pay cash for the telephone expense? Now, again, we wanna do what happened last time. So we're gonna look at our charter accounts and say, what account represents telephone expense? Probably gonna be in the expense area down here. Uh, but you know, what, what did they call it? Normally, we would call it telephone expense, but I don't see that. And if this isn't the first month, maybe they put it into utilities expense. Now, I just wanna show you that just because what we wanna do is copy what happened last month so we have consistency. And whenever we change bookkeepers or change people within the department, they're always gonna to want to put their own new chart of accounts in there. But as much as possible, when you go in, you wanna have it consistent unless it doesn't make sense and then you wanna break things out. And so in this case, if they put the telephone into utilities, I'm gonna keep doing that until uh, we come to the decision that uh, we should break out the telephone. So I'm gonna say, okay, we'll put it there and paste it in H20, right click and paste it to one, two, three. Then indent the uh, H20 and uh, go back home tab, alignment, increase indenting. And you might not be able to do this by the way, if, cause I locked the sheet. So just you know, be aware of that. There's certain things you can't do, but I'm trying to save you the pain of deleting formulas on the locked cells. So that's why we you know, lock them. All right, now we're gonna post this. Now again, the utilities is way on the bottom on the trial balance and therefore will be way on the bottom of the general ledger. So I'm gonna go way over to the other side again to post this. I'm gonna go way over here, down to the last one. We already got the 480 for the electric. We're gonna put the phone right underneath it in cell AM22. Gonna do it with a formula by saying equals 
using the scroll bar, scrolling way back over here and pointing to the one we want in I-20 and enter. And, and again, if you can do that, you can really visualize what, you know, what is happening here. And that, of course, changed the cell from 480, debiting the expense accounts as expenses always are debited, going up in the debit direction, bringing net income down. We can see that 780 as well. If we scroll back over here, so there's the 780. We're out of balance by 300. Why? Because we haven't posted the other side being cash. Therefore, let's do that. We only got like two places left for cash. So cash is going to be down here. And I'm going to put it in P20 and say that that equals and point to cash of 300 and enter. So that brings the amount from 26 to 60 down by 300 to 25, 960. All right, so now let's do that same thing in QuickBooks. So going back to QuickBooks, we're going to say the cash account and we're going to say as of uh, 530, we have uh utilities i'm going to keep that and and do we did we name the utility company something for oh i have an actual company name at least that's interesting i didn't call it telephone company all right and then tab and quickbooks vendor we're going to add it for the amount of 300 it's an expense and it's going to go to um we put it to utilities utilities that's what we did and enter now let's check the trial balance and we're saying cash now 25960 cash over here is 25960 utilities at 780 and net income 4360 uh, so we're going to go back over here uh, over here <laughs> utilities 780 go to the and no we can't really figure out what the net income is as easily it would be the credit minus the debit minus the debit uh, so this worksheet actually works a little bit easier. We can just say, well, it's that, that's net income right there. It's income, not expenses. Credits are winning. Uh, but here we go to the profit and loss and say profit minus expenses, 4360. All right, so it looks like everything is tying out as it should, which is nice. Therefore, we will go to the second to last one here. And we're going to say that this one is done. So I'm going to make it green. Go to the next one, and that one says receive services re recorded, <laughs> services provided, but for which cash has not been received. So we did work, and I mean, our first question, is cash affected? No, we did work, didn't get the cash yet. So now that cash isn't impacted in this one, we need to say, well, what, what are we going to do then? <laughs> if we didn't get cash, but we did work, I'm going to argue that we did get something. What did we get? an IOU, just like if you go to work and you get your paycheck at the end of the week, if you went in on Monday, you get paid on Friday, that they, I, they owe you money. That's worth something. Um, we can depend on that. So hopefully, so therefore we're gonna say, we got something, we got a receivable here. So it's an asset. It's a claim to, to hopefully cash that we're gonna, or something that we're gonna receive in the future. It's our second favorite asset. I'd rather have cash, but having people owe us stuff is kind of good too. It's a good thing. So we're going to say that it has a debit balance. We got more of it. People owe us more stuff. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case will be a debit. So we're going to debit that. I know I haven't put the date, but I'm going to paste it one, two, three. Then I'll put the date of 530 and the amount of 1003 in the debit section and the credit of a credit negative 1300 because every transaction has an equal number of debits and credits then we just need to know what that account should be okay so what account what should that be well why are people going to pay us because we did work uh, and whenever we do work under the revenue recognition principle that's the point in time that we should record the revenue so the other account's going to be revenue in this case we're going to record the revenue at this point in time we already know that we're going to credit it. Does that make sense? Well, if we look at a trial balance, we can see revenue has a credit balance represented by the brackets and it only goes up. Customers only pay us. We don't pay the customer unless, you know, there's a refund or something kind of funny happens. So revenue only goes up in the credit direction. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. So it does make sense that we will sense <laughs> that we will credit that. So I'm going to copy this, paste it one, two, three in H24, paste it one, two, three. And then I'm going to indent, home tab, alignment, increase indenting. 
And then we can post out this journal entry to this general ledger, first with accounts receivable. Second account on the trial balance, second account on the GL. There it is. I know we're scrolling around screens. I hope that's getting more used, you know, we're getting used to that. We're going to say an S12 equals, I'm going to scroll to the end and scroll down and there's the receivable. 1003 debit. That makes our account go up in the debit direction from 100 by 1003 to 1400. There's the 1400 here. We are out of balance because we have not yet posted the revenue. Revenue being the first dark blue account on the trial balance. It will be the same on the general ledger. Let's scroll over and find that dark blue account, which is in the same order as its liabilities, equity, income, and expense. There's our revenue. Notice there's only credits because revenue only goes up in the credit direction. We are in cell AF21 equals, and we're going to scroll back over here, way over here, point to that 1003 and enter. Revenue goes up again as it always does. Goes up, up, up to 7004. 7004 is here. And we're going to post that same thing now to QuickBooks. And I, like I said, I'm gonna do that as much as I can with the check register, but there's no cash affected here. So I can't use the check register in this case. So I'm gonna use the form that is normally used by QuickBooks in order to record a, uh, a, a, re a receivable and revenue. That form is the invoice, kind of like our bill to the customer. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna do that by going to customers. There's a bunch of ways you can get in here, but, and then create an invoice. And who's this invoice going to? It's going to, I'm just gonna copy it. I'm not sure if we've dealt with this customer before. So we'll put that there, quick add, and I'll keep the invoice number. I'm not gonna fill it anything else. I'm, and we're gonna say we do bookkeeping. That's our item number, that's what we do. So I'm just gonna say books just to keep it simple. And we're gonna say 1,300 is the amount. Now, this cell looks a little bit more tricky to us when we go from theory to formats because we can't see the journal entry here. And QuickBooks you know, is purposely not showing a journal entry, so people that do data entry aren't confused by debits and credits. That's the point. But uh, you know, in order for us to understand, we need to know what the journal entry is. And what's the journal entry? Well, the invoice itself means we're going to debit accounts receivable. It's going to be an accounts receivable uh, assigned to the customer, uh, P. Thompson. And then the other side of the invoice is gonna be revenue. That's what an invoice is. That's what an invoice does. That's the journal entry behind an invoice. Debit, receivable, credit, revenue. Now, if we sell inventory, then we have another piece to it, which is debit, cost of goods sold, and uh, credit to the, the inventory account. So I'm sorry, I think I might've messed that up. So the invoice itself for a service company is a debit to accounts receivable, credit, revenue. If we deal with inventory, which we're not in this case, we would have another piece in the invoice of which none of the numbers or the accounts will be represented dealing with the decrease in inventory and the recording of cost of goods sold. That is something we'll talk about at a later time. We're gonna save and close this and there it is. And then we'll go back here and see what happens. 25,960, 25,960 here. And then we're going to say that the other side went to revenue 7,400, 7,400 here. Net income is being shown on Excel of 5,660. And QuickBooks, it's being shown in terms of revenue of 5,660. Everything looks like it lines up. We only have one more left that we can do, and then we have to stop. It's going to be... So we gotta really enjoy this last one here. I'm gonna make this one green and go down. And now we got owner draws. So when we think about the draws, now the owner is taking out money for their personal use. So is cash affected? Yeah, it's going from the business to the personal checking to be later used in the, in the personal account. And that's what we're trying to do, of course, is keep the business side of things separate from the personal side therefore being able to track our what you know our goal in business which is to generate revenue and our goal on the personal life which is to budget and, and you know to live well and to budget our, our stuff on that side as well so if we keep those two separate then it makes it easier to track both those things 
So we're going to say 531. All right, cash is going down. Cash has a debit balance. We need to do the opposite thing to make it go down. So therefore, we will credit it. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put it on the bottom, right-clicking in H27, one, two, three. The credit will be four, negative one, two, zero, zero, zero. We're going to debit one, two, zero, 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 because every account has an equal number of debits and credits. That debit then will go to what? Uh, draws. So who drew? Owner. So I'm going to go in the owner section, which is this light green. We're not going to put it to capital. We could, but we're going to make another account usually called draws, which is kind of like a contra equity account, an equity account, normal equity accounts having credit balances. And this one having a debit balance, therefore bringing down total equity. So we're going to copy draws, put it on the debit side. I'm going to indent the cash by going to the home tab alignment increase and denting we can then post this last one draws first draws is the second light blue account because it's in order assets liabilities equity go into those light blue accounts over here assets liabilities equity there it is it's a debit in ae 14 ae 14 using a formula equals scrolling back over pointing to where we want to be twelve thousand. enter there we have that bring this amount up that amount will be posted here we're out of balance by 12,000 why because we haven't posted the cash side so cash is here we are in the credit side p21 p21 is going to equal we're going to point to that 12,000 when we hit enter this is a debit this is a credit those are opposites therefore cash is going to go down to 13,960 and there we have that back in balance here there's the 13960 there we're going to post this last one to quickbooks and that uh, will wrap things up so we're going to go to the checking account and i'm going to say as of 5 30 make it a check and we're going to say owner and it's going to be for twelve thousand. and i think quickbooks gave us an account for draws they called it uh, owner draws so there we have it and enter and if we go to the trial balance we're going to say cash 13960 cash here 13960 we're going to go down to uh, draws 12,000 we're going to go to the draws here and we have 12,000 we have net income of 5,660 not impacted by the draws because the draws are not income or expense it represents money taken out doesn't represent earnings or expenses so we're gonna go to profit and we got five six six zero that's what we have over here so uh, that's gonna be our our first part of this uh, section here we did we did the journal entries last time we completed the month's worth of journal entries this time this is all we're gonna have for the first month of operations then we're gonna go to the closing process we're gonna we're, well, actually we're gonna go to the adjusting process you don't have this tab on your worksheet we have it on this worksheet. Here's the adjusting tab. Then we'll create the financial statement and then we'll do the closing entries. Obviously, uh, you can see it looks a bit different on QuickBooks because we'll still have to do adjusting entries. And when we do adjusting entries, we'll have to use the actual journal entries. So that's one place QuickBooks still hasn't really, I mean, you can kind of avoid journal entries to do that, but that's really something where you need to understand journal entries and the adjusting process. The adjusting process is also something that, uh, um, you know the audit process often does or the review process often does so if you go into public accounting the adjusting process and a format uh, such as this the the way this this worksheet looks is something you'll work with you, you know you may work with something a lot i work with it a lot something like this uh in, in order to post the journal entries to a worksheet as well as if you do taxes and you're gonna have to post the adjustment between the the the, the trial balance and the tax trial balance this type of worksheet in excel or some other software formatted like that is, uh, is really, really useful. Uh, and so also note that when we make the financial statements, you'll note that QuickBooks generates it automatically. It is just a formula. So, so if we put the data in there correctly and we tell the data which accounts it should go to correctly, QuickBooks will generate the, the forms. What we need to know is is, is is the data in there correctly? Have we set it up correctly? And in order to do that, we need to know some accounting theory in order to, to make those types uh, of decisions. So we'll show that and we'll also show the closing process 
and how QuickBooks kind of deals with the pro closing process and the, and the pros and cons and the problems and pitfalls that, that do happen with a, with a software like QuickBooks in terms of the closing process, in terms of rolling the accounts forward from month to month. So when you bring QuickBooks to your, um, your accountant at the end of the year and they're trying to figure out year to year or month to month the financial statements, we could have timing differences uh, because of the way QuickBooks is set up. And those are some common issues that uh, are, are worth understanding, both from the student side, of course, and from the small business side. So uh, yeah, like I say, next time, hopefully next time, we'll be doing the adjusting process, or at least part of the adjusting process in a similar format, and it will be great.